Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the USHL in Focus. Joining us today, the head coach of the Muskegon Lumberjacks, Parker Burgess. Welcome, uh, Parker. How are things going in Muskegon today? Things are going great. Uh, guys had a couple days off. We were back at it today in the gym and on the ice and had a good practice. Had a good weekend last weekend and now uh, just preparing for, for another weekend ahead. Yeah, and the team's playing pretty well right now, Parker. You've actually been pretty consistent all year, winning close to four or five games every month leading up to uh, this month, uh, you're in your second year with the organization there as the, as the head coach. Uh, you took over midway through last year. What's the biggest difference between last year's team and this year's team, Parker? You finished just out of the playoffs last year, but it looks like you're in a pretty good spot right now with your second place standing there in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I think, you know, just having a summer last year was pretty wild. Um, obviously, for myself, I didn't start the year as the head coach. Uh, we went through transition with ownership, coaching, um, moved some veteran players throughout the year to to make some space and provide some ice time and opportunities for some of our younger guys. And with all the transition and um, throwing a lot of those younger guys into the fire, uh, obviously that makes it challenging to be consistent and win hockey games. But I was really proud last year, you know, of the group that we had putting in an effort to, you know, play meaningful hockey games down the stretch. I think was really an important experience for our group, you know, going into this season. Um, but, you know, overall, just having a summer to plan and to, you know, round out our staff. We hired a couple more coaches um, and really just have a plan going into this year. Last year was kind of seat of your pants, figure out each day as it comes. Um, and then this year, you know, and, and just being in the league now for two years, you just have a better understanding of how hard it is to win the travel, um, the level of players, everything. And so, uh, just having a, a summer under our belt to, uh, just have some continuity and familiarity, uh, heading into this season has allowed us to feel much more prepared and, uh, give our players a better chance to have success. People have talked about the progression of the talent level. You spoke to it a little bit there in the USHL and the competition you face every weekend. And your squad in particular is a pretty good example of what's going on right now. You've got three of the top seven scorers in the USHL in your lineup. And I think if people look at the Lumberjacks lineup, Parker, they would they would the first thing they know is probably is the skill level you have with your forward group and and not just the skill level, but the depth. Yeah, I mean, our forward group, it's uh I don't think it's a secret. Like you know, we got a lot of different guys that can step up and score um, on any given night. You don't necessarily have a first line. <clears throat> you know, you have two or three lines that can provide that offense. And if one line maybe isn't clicking offensively or uh, doesn't have the same feel and touch in a game and, um, you know, just can't provide that offense. We have, you know, at least two, if not three other lines that can step up and take that responsibility. And uh, to have, you know, the weapons that we have, it's it's a credit to the work that our management team and Steve Lowe, Jimmy McGrory, our scouts, you know, bringing those guys in. And um, obviously for us as coaches, it's just providing, you know, strong competition and everybody wants ice time and everybody wants opportunities on the power play and in certain situations. And when you have depth and, you know, that competitive depth, it, it allows the players to push each other. And, um, you know, the, the group's been tremendous up front and, uh, we expect big things here down the stretch. I think you have maybe nine guys with at least 20 points in your lineup um, uh, up front. And, uh, you know, the easy thing is take a look at uh, Matt V. Gridden and Sasha Boisvert. I, I think one of your most underrated players, what people don't talk enough, is is Ethan Whitcomb. Yeah, I mean, Ethan's in his third year, and uh, Sasha and Matt V. have both had tremendous seasons. Um you know, they're the ones that being their age and their draft year. And, you know, I think Sasha right now sits one or two in the league in goals and Matt Bay's in second in points. So they get a lot of attention for sure. And, and that attention is well-deserved, but, you know, we do have a lot of other guys, um, including Ethan that, you know, don't get as recognized at times, but are just as important. And they really drive us to uh, offensively. Ethan's had a great year. Um, you know, he's well above a point per game. Uh, plays hard and and finishes his checks and just seeing his maturation and his development from last year into this year uh, and it extends past just on the ice you know off the ice he, he wears a letter for us um, he never misses an opportunity for a development skate a workout um, he's in in the coach's room doing film so uh, he's been 
yeah, fantastic all season long on and off the ice providing offense, um, but also just being a strong presence without the puck and the leadership in the locker room. And to your point, we have other guys too. You know, you have Joe Connor and Justin Solove and Ty Henricks and, you know, a lot of these guys that, uh, you know, on any given night, you don't know which guy's going to be your best forward. And um, it's nice to have that stable of horses. And, uh, but yeah, Ethan's been, been fantastic. And he's such a great kid. He cares about his teammates. Uh, he's, you know, very well respected by the coaching staff. And it's great to see him have a terrific year. He really deserves it. Yeah. And every time I watch the Lumberjacks play, uh, Cody Kroll is always scoring big goals. Yeah, Cody. Dave, I miss him. Uh, he's, yeah. He's a- and Dave, David Klee as well. Um, yeah. Um, and then along the blue line, uh, Easton Young, Xavier Veyu, and uh, Ryan Caring. I mean, it's just you got uh, some really good uh, players along the blue line too. Nice depth there. Yeah, it's it's you know, and I think our decor understands that our forwards are the ones that at times get the attention and um, maybe a little bit more buzz just because of the the profiles that those guys have in the talent, but we've been really happy with our decor all year. They kind of, they play with a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, Ryan Coring as a first year player at a Minnesota high school is leading the league in plus minus um, him and Xavier Veyu have been uh, a pretty dynamic D pair all year. And, you know, you have two guys coming in, one's an 06, one's an 05 coming out of Minnesota high school in Quebec, triple a, uh, you know, I think going in our expectations as coaches were, okay, you know, it'll take these guys a while to transition and to figure out the league. But the way they were able to transition to this level uh, just really speaks to their maturity um, and their talent and their understanding of the game, their hockey IQ. You know, those guys play big minutes for us. They'll play penalty kill, but, you know, they get opportunities on the power play. Um, And just to see the pride that those two, you know, a lot young defensemen, you know, especially in today's game, it's it's all about jo- joining the rush and being a dynamic two-way guy. You know, and I su- sometimes think some of the younger guys lose sight of defending. You know, like that's your defenseman and you got to be able to defend. That's that's the first thing you have to make sure that you're efficient at. And those are two guys that just love keeping the puck out of the back of their net. They're um, team first guys. They'll sell out, they'll block shots. Um Easton Young's been dynamic, you know, from an offensive standpoint and helping run our power play. Uh, Bauer Berry stepped up in a big role too, uh, kind of playing on our top D pair. And then uh, Cam McCoy, who's, you know, a 16 year old um, has taken huge steps. He was a tender of ours and he's an, you know, everyday player for us playing minutes and um, his growth has been tremendous. And, you know, bringing Philip Norberg in, who's a, a 19 year old, pretty high draft pick and a guy who's played, you know, all of his hockey growing up over in Europe and then having to be in season and make the transition to the USHL and seeing him really flourish on the back end um, has just kind of rounded out that group. And uh, last week we were able to add Jake Toll, um, you know, from Sioux Falls, and he had a really nice weekend for us. And uh, we got depth with Miles Gust. And, you know, those guys don't get as much credit or buzz sometimes as the forward group, but they've been doing a, a tremendous job for us back there. And and then it seems like even though you've used seven goaltenders this year, Parker, uh, things are sort of stabilized back there with a couple of young guys uh, who've been goaltenders of the weekend USHL here in the last month uh, with Bo Lane and uh, uh, Gadzia. Uh, forgive me, I'm not sure if I can pronounce his first name. We, we just call him Shika. Shika. <laughs> but they but they they provide some stability back uh, on uh, between the pipes for you here. It seems recently. <clears throat> yeah, they've. You know, that was a uh, an area that we had to address. And again, management did a really good job going out and uh, helping provide us as coaches and our organization um, the ability to make saves and give our team a chance to win. And that's really what the goaltending position, you need a guy who's going to give your team confidence and compete every night. And you don't necessarily always need a 40 save shutout or one goal game, but, you, you know, we believe with with our offense and our forward group, if our goalies can keep it, you know, fairly low scoring, uh, we have a good chance to win. And Bo came in, you know, right before Christmas and we needed stability and he did a great job. He won his first three games. Uh, then Miles Roberts came in and he's been good for us as well. I believe his records three and one, four and one. Um, and then bringing Shika in from Slovakia, you know, he's just such a passionate, enthusiastic, athletic kid. Um, he's fit right in with our group in terms of, we have a very, competitive group and you see it every day in practice and in development skates and then it, it obviously translated into into the gameplay but uh Shika's 
you know, definitely cut from the Muskegon lumberjack cloth. Uh, he loves being at the rank. He's not afraid to, to, you know, give his teammates little jabs and stuff when they're not scoring. And he's kind of got a Mark Andre Fleury personality, but I think he gives our group a lot of confidence and uh, you see it in his play. He's been back to back, you know, goaltender of the week in the USHL. And um, we're just really happy he's here and happy the whole group's here. It's nice to have that competitive depth in, in the net. You touched on the tender process in the USHL here uh, when you're talking about a coin. Uh, I believe Sasha Boisware was another kid who was tendered a couple years ago. Yep. Um, and then just recently you announced uh, Tynan, uh, Tynan Lawrence, Lawrence, Tynan yep. Lawrence from, from Shattuck. And it uh, looks like a uh, another uh, good piece. And you had another player that you'd signed earlier in the year, Rudolph uh, uh, Burkholms, I think is his name. Uh, so tell us about, maybe walk us through that process a little bit, Parker. How does that, how does that work? Yeah. I mean, our, Again, we're really fortunate in Muskegon to have management, scouts, guys who have boots on the ground that are putting in the work, identifying talent and players, and really understanding on a year to year basis, you know, what we're going to lose, what we need to bring in, uh, what are the areas that we have to address. And, you know, for us, um, you know, we're going to be, you know, we got a great forward group this year, but um, the majority of those guys this year. Uh, so we, you know, I think the management staff did a great job addressing the need to add some size and skill up front. And uh, both Rudy and Ty are very dynamic offensive players. They're they're big and they're strong, um, you know, and that's something with Sasha coming in as a 16 year old. You know, he might not have been the heaviest right off the bat, but he had the size and the reach. Um, and I just think that makes at times the transition a little smoother as a 16 year old. Um, and both Rudy and Ty, you know, they're just both very driven uh, competitive young man, they are very invested in their development and understand the areas that they have to improve. And, um, you know, like I said, management did a great job identifying two really good players. We were able to uh, kind of see them in person as a coaching staff throughout the year too. And we're really excited to get our hands on with them and, and get to help them with their development and put some work in. So we're excited about both of them. They're going to play some pretty integral roles here in the Muskegon Lumberjacks moving forward. Sasha Boisbert, we probably haven't talked enough about Sasha and, and Matt V. Gridden and the seasons they're having and um, the progression that they've made over the course of a year's time. Uh, uh, Matt V. I, I, hasn't necessarily come out of the blue, but uh, he's had a, a great year, obviously, from the start to finish. And then Sasha Boisbert, I remember when I started last year in the league, people were talking about him uh uh, quite a bit last year being probably one of the kids that's going to rise up the draft rankings. And he has, I think he's uh, probably getting close to being a top 10 kid when it's all said and done uh, when those final draft rankings, if he continues to progress, but uh, the nature of uh, the junior game is of course that uh, Matt V will probably be at Michigan next year. And Sasha more than likely will be at North Dakota. What kind of uh, things have you seen from them in their second year with your organization, Parker? Yeah, Sasha and Matt, they are, you know, I think we all know they're incredible players. They're very different players, but they're both so competitive. They have a lot of similarities in their personalities. You know, they're both very driven. Um, they both love being at the rink. Uh, they put the work in, like, you know, they, both of them, first one's here, last one's to leave a lot of days. Um, they're very invested in their development, but they're, they're just so driven and so competitive and, um, not only for individual success, uh, but also, you know, they want to win and they understand how important winning is not only for the team, but for their careers and what it, you know, what it means for their development to have a deep playoff run and get, hopefully get an experience in, uh, in the playoffs. So, uh, both of them have been incredible. Um, Sasha's big, he's strong, uh, plays 200 feet. He's obviously got a heavy, quick release, and he's able to beat goaltenders, you know, with his shot and uh, makes an impact on every shift. He's physical. He's not afraid uh, to play an abrasive game, you know, and he showed that whether it's standing up for a teammate or finishing checks, blocking shots. Um, he just wants to win. And you can see it in his face and the way he pushes himself every day. And uh, with Matt Vey, you know, he's just so driven to impact the game however he can, whether it's, you know, with his offensive flair, making a play, 
you know, he, I know he thinks of himself at times as a pass first playmaking type player, but he's got one of the quick, quickest releases I've seen. And um, just both of them are so fun to work with. Uh, they do things every day that, you know, leave the coaching staff just saying like, you know, how appreciative we are to get to work with these talents and um, these athletes and they want to get better. They push us to be better coaches. And the thing that strikes me about both of them as young men is, you know, they both provide leadership to our team, but with all the attention and buzz that they have around them, uh, that can be a real distraction for a 17 year old kid. And both of them, you know, one's from Quebec, one's from Russia. And for both of them, English is a second language. And I think that gets lost sometimes that they're, they're taking all this in. They're trying to play high level hockey, win a Clark cup, get points, help the team win, get drafted, and they're they're taking all that attention on as 17 year olds where English isn't even their first language. And so to be able to do that with the emotional maturity and composure that they have is um, it's been special to watch. Like it says a lot about who they are as people and how are they how they were raised. They both have tremendous families. Uh, they both are humble kids. And um, yeah, they're going to be a big part of our team down the stretch run. And I know for us as coaches getting to work with those guys for two years has been very special. Um, and we're excited to see how the rest of the year progresses for them, but also where their careers take them. Absolutely. It's been impressive. 20 games left in the regular season for the Lumberjacks. Parker, uh, first on the docket, is a home and home with uh, USA Hockey National Team Development Program this weekend. And you could close out February with three games against uh, Green Bay. So excited to see how things roll for uh, Muskegon here. The uh, last third of the season, we're not that far away from the playoffs and excited to see what happens for you, okay? Appreciate it, Paul. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks a lot. Uh, good luck to you guys this weekend, okay? Safe travels. Appreciate it.